Hi, uh, glad you could join us. Uh, my name is Steve Babbitt. I'm pastor of Spring Valley Community Church in Spring Valley. And uh, welcome to day two of our initial three-day fast that's going to continue throughout the summer of 2020 and maybe beyond, but it'll be every Friday after this initial week. So we're doing Thursday, Friday, Saturday, uh, joining together uh, a few churches uh, and as just as Christians to pray and fast and to seek God's will in this time. Uh, I am so honored that we have some really wonderful, humble pastors of some incredible churches in East County that are uh, joining together for this. It started out with just um, Scott Archer and I talking and saying, you know, we should get our churches together and pray during the COVID crisis and things have just sort of uh, snowballed from there and other folks we know, pastors we know, uh, we've invited to kind of come join in and it's been just a real blessing. Um, I can hardly wait for the people in my congregation, I'll be honest with you, to hear encouragement from Pastor Barmer of Bright Hope Community Church of Spring Valley, Pastor Archer at Central Congregational Church of La Mesa, Pastor Womack of uh, Cross Point Life Church in La Mesa, uh, Pastor Orlando of Life Point Church in, Ar in La Mesa, Pastor Roland Slade of Meridian Baptist Church of El Cajon, Pastor uh, Craig of New Heights Community Church in Santee and more. Um, as Dr. King said, uh, God rings good with a W, rings good from evil. And our uniting together to pray and encourage one another is definitely a long overdue good that's coming out of this particular time of trial. Uh, so to my colleagues in ministry and to your congregations, I wanna express my appreciation and ensure that I will do my best to speak thoughtfully and respectfully here today. Uh, so today I'm talking about hope, and I just have a brief devotional to guide you. There are scriptures underneath the uh, the video here that you might want to look at uh, that are very helpful with regard to hope. But uh, I want to talk about hope as something that sees through walls. I can remember in 1977 uh, in kindergarten watching uh, Star Wars on the big screen and being terrified as several of the main characters ended up in this situation where they were in a garbage compactor and the walls kept crushing coming in on them and they were just being overwhelmed by these walls and there was no way out. I remember the panic I felt and the anxiety I felt, even as a, a kindergarten watching this happen, thinking there's no way out for these people. And uh, this season that we're in right now has been filled with walls. Uh, walls of COVID-19 began to crush in and then walls of the economy uh, began to come in at us and now walls of, of deep-seated prejudice are beginning to crush us and then walls of violence and looting and, and protests that have gone way beyond what's uh, peaceable. And uh, all these things working together just seem to be crushing us and causing uh, a, a lot of despair for many of us. Um, I could go on further and talk about walls of generational poverty, uh, systematic prejudice, and of course the big one, the wall of human pride and, and selfish sin that, that led to all of these other walls becoming so prominent. One thing I know to be true, if we fixate on our walls, if we ogle our obstacles, if we dwell on divisions, those walls that divide us now will crush us tomorrow. There is no joy and there is no peace when the dividing walls are all we choose to observe. Hope, however, hope, however, is the practice of seeing through walls. Hope knows that weeping may tarry for the night, but joy comes in the morning, Psalm 30 and 5. Hope knows that although we may endure the burden of the cross and its shame today, the veil is just about to be torn and a resurrection is coming on the third day. Hope holds fast to the promise that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us, Romans 8:18. 8, Hope trusts in the God who has plans to prosper us and not to harm us, plans to give us hope and a future. Romans 15, 13 says this. It says, so may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Three things that I see that Romans 15, 13 says about hope. I'll keep it brief. First, God is the God of hope. He's the hope God, not the guilt God, not the shame God, not the regret God, not the strife God, not the confusion God, not the depression God, not the despair God. He is the 
God of hope. Hope is who God is, and hope is what he stands for today. The second thing I notice in this is that peace and joy are given to those who trust in him. This is one of the reasons that fasting and prayer, like we're doing together now as a community, that's why it's so important. Fasting is simply the discipline of focusing on God instead of ourselves, of focusing on the eternal rather than the temporary, of transcending our selfish needs for the higher needs, uh, for love and joy and peace. Some things are more important than food in our bellies. I keep thinking of the words from that simple song, We Have Come Into This House by Bruce Ballinger. It says, uh, so forget about yourself and concentrate on him and worship him. And when we do that, hope will overflow in us and through us, which brings me to my last point. Hope is made to overflow. Hope is made to overflow. The last part of Romans 15, 13 tells us what we are to do with this hope that we have from trusting in God. We are to disseminate hope. Do you see the pattern in this? That the God of hope gives his people hope, and they in turn spread hope to the world around them. It is a remarkable mystery to fathom that God chooses you and me as his preferred means of distributing hope. Wow, what a privilege and what a responsibility. Now, hope is not naive. Being a person of hope doesn't mean we pretend that the walls aren't there at all. No, we don't pretend that. Our walls today are very very real. The problems we're facing today are not going to just go away by pretending they're not there. Walls of fear and poverty and oppression, of racism and violence have been with us for a long time, and they will take time to tear down. I can tell you this, though, about hope. Those walls will never come down if we do not have a vision and a hope that they will. Hope is not threatened by trouble, but trouble is certainly threatened by hope. Hope is a hammer that busts through impossible walls. So today, on this second day of our three-day fast, let's ask ourselves, am I overwhelmed by the walls as they seem to close in around me? Or am I finding renewed joy and peace as I trust in the God of hope? Will we fix our eyes on the walls that divide us? Or will we fix our eyes on Jesus, the one who, quote, has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility? As we fast and pray on this day, may we capture the hope that proclaims we're hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. Second Corinthians 4, 8 and 9. I'd like to make a suggested prayer for you here, first for ourselves. As you pray today, hope, pray for ourselves that we have hope to see beyond our present personal troubles. Hope for our communities, pray for our communities that they can hope to see beyond the walls of our past and into a future where all of God's children can love one another as God intended. Also pray for our leaders, pray that they will have hope that listens carefully beyond the charged rhetoric of understandable anger and to skillfully provide their communities with a vision and a future. We need hope. Pray for those for the situation with COVID-19. Hope that relief will come soon, that healthcare workers will find the rest they need, and that the infection rate will continue to decline. And finally, for the economy, hope that jobs will soon return, that there will be no lack of food and shelter among our vulnerable populations. As we pray today, let's ask the Lord to hear our prayer. Again, thank you very much.